Welcome back everyone, Turk here. Uh, this is take two of this video because uh, I was hoping to get it out for you guys uh, probably about 12, no about 14 hours ago. But I got a little too adventurous with what I was doing and that kind of resulted in uh, no video for about, well up until just before I was going to be playing the clip I'll be reacting to so that meant the entire intro and everything no video so I had to can it postpone it and wait till I got home from work today to get it done so that was a bit of fun this morning you know followed up by the fact that something either overnight or the night before has bit me on the legs and now my right calf is about uh, Half again as big as it normally should be, and uh, I just can't catch a break at the moment. Whether it's people or insects or whatever, or technology working against me, they're having a field day. But we'll push on, we'll get through it. Um, I do have a new microphone, so hopefully the audio is going to be a bit better for this one. Uh, this is another one of my guaranteed reacts from my patreon page this one this artist has also been commonly suggested on all my Ren videos and of course this is the other guitarist from the big push Roman Axisa uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name correctly I apologize to him if I'm not um, I tried looking for I know an interview or something where someone would introduce him by his name but I couldn't find anything without spoiling what his sound was like so I, so after I see this clip I might go looking again so on the next one I can get his name right ah oh, guess which idiot did not mute his phone okay lesson number one of recording work Everyone, don't do what Turk does. Mute your damn phone. Calls can wait till after I've recorded this video. Um, yeah, so it's Roman Axisa and his song Time After Time, recorded live at St. Augustine's Chapel. This I'm looking forward to because anything recorded in a chapel or a church generally have amazing acoustics um, just those large halls with a, a lot of angles in the architecture can go one of two ways either the acoustics are absolutely rubbish which I've found in some live music venues or they can be absolutely amazing and generally in chapels and churches especially very old ones the acoustics are just amazing because they're designed that way for you know the pipe organs and various things so i'm looking forward to that absolutely well before we get into it we've got two things to get on with firstly the usual admin if you like the video if you like the channel please like and share if you really like it please feel free to subscribe hit the notification bell every little bit helps in the algorithm to get the channel out there uh, i am hoping within the next uh, let's say three months to hit 10,000 subscriptions that way the channel grows even more i can put more into it and yeah and certainly makes the effort i'm putting in worthwhile and certainly the late nights um, and of course if you really want to support the channel please head on over to my patreon page where you've got exclusives early access behind the scenes polls um, i just put up a few new polls today um, one and one post asking for people to come up with suggestions for what I should do should I reach 10,000 subscribers on YouTube 
Now, I'd like to give something back to everyone who's helped me get there. And my current plan is just basically take, say, the top five most popular suggestions. Then I'm going to put them in a poll on my Patreon and anyone on my Patreon can then vote. And I'll pick the winner out and hopefully have whatever it is ready in time when I hit 10,000 and I can release that for you all. Okay, that's the admin and stuff done. Now, one last thing before the video. Um, on my last video, I started doing something a little new, at least for me. Um, made me feel good about helping the community and helping out other content creators. So what I intend to do is every video I do, I'm going to go through find a um, someone doing reaction videos who could probably use a bit of the love that I was shown early on in my foray into reacting videos okay. as a thank you to the universe for sending all the renegades and such to me I'm going to go through and find someone who I think deserves a bit of the love not deserves because everyone deserves the love but someone who's positive about the community and about music you know, is doesn't seem to be there for the negativity you no know, just wants to spread the the word of good music so generally i'll i'll try and so find someone who's just starting off preferably someone who maybe doesn't have the numbers to be on the partner program yet so, you know, maybe we can give them that little leg up that they need. Today, uh, I have someone who I actually uh, came in contact with a couple of weeks ago after noticing his video. And, you know, we exchanged a few messages. Seems like a really nice guy. Definitely seems to appreciate the music for what it is. And is just seems to be positive about it all. So, this shout out goes to my boy Squirrel. Keep rocking, man, and hope you get the love you deserve. Excellent. Okay, without any more screwing around, uh, let's get on with the video. This is Roman Axisa. Once again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I will endeavour to find out after I do this video. I just didn't want to spoil his stuff. And his video, time after time live at St. Augustine's Chapel. Can you hear it play? You can already hear the reverb. Like they've obviously gone through and found where is the best spot to set up to get the best effect. Not so much on the guitar, though I don't doubt you will soon, but definitely on those vocals, there was just that little bit of reverb, which no doubt when he you know, amps up the volume of the vocals will be definitely more pronounced. Once again, fantastic guitar for this, obviously, style. I can already tell it, he's going to be doing a lot of this softer melody stuff. Four chord progression. Either an Epiphone or a Gibson 335. Let's face it, there's not much that much difference between them other than the logo on the headstock. And slight difference to headstock shape as well. But they're a fantastic guitar for this kind of sound. The humbuckers make it a lot more nice and warm. Not to mention the chambered semi-hollow body. I, I don't enjoy playing them myself. Um, it's not my style of guitar to play. Not even the look. It's just they don't feel right in my hands. 
I'm not I'm not a multi-talented guy who can pick up can pick up any instrument and feel comfortable with it unfortunately I generally want to play stuff or play an instrument a few times to make sure I gel with it before I start using it for anything important anyway let's go back uh, or before I do so so far what is it just four four chord melody structure and you know a fairly restrained vocal line so far which is a nice way to start you don't want to start off you know 100 miles per hour in a setting like this because you're you're wasting the atmosphere now let's go back to just before he starts singing can you hear play definitely done live Grateful sound of silence. I like how they haven't adjusted the pitch on the vocal. Take this good old pain away. All we've learned here was violence. Time after time, we will bury our seed. So we've known Crime after crime Soon there'll be nothing out here Calling home Okay, but I'm assuming they're going to get back into a verse here So far the, the song structure seems fairly Regular Nothing out of the ordinary it's just four 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 chord melody. Yeah, it, it's so far structured like a regular pop song, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes you you want to let the actual feeling of the song speak for itself. You don't have to do anything flashy with the structure or which chords you're using. Let's face it, a lot of most of the fam most famous songs ever written use three or four chords, and that's about it. I wish I'd realised that when I was younger and didn't spend my time playing a hundred notes a minute. Four. Four. Three even. Three is all you need. But, uh, yeah. So far, fantastic use of the, the environment. Not overdoing it. I love the fact that it's obviously been recorded live because there's no pitch correction on his vocals. He was flat on some of those no it's not majorly but a little bit flat and that added to the feel I, I've seen a lot of vocals who will intentionally and he might be too intentionally sing a bit flat because it just adds a bit of that feeling into the song you know that feeling of loss and, what, and whatnot loss and sadness if you're just a bit flat on some of the the vocal pitches, can really add to the emotion of the song. So you don't have to use perfect auto tune every time. All right, let's see if I'm right about it. I'm going back into the verse. He Never too young to die When the old don't learn the lesson Many angels will fly Is anyone home in heaven? Since it's so we've known Crime after crime Soon there'll be nothing out here We're calling home hey. 
just before he gets into that. Apologies for moving around then. I had forgotten to turn uh, that very particular light on, which is probably a little important. I actually love the fact that they've left the inconsistencies in here. Excuse me. <coughs> You'll notice a lot of times when he's plucking, especially the east, the low E string, it's very heavy. It's a lot louder than what he's plucking the other strings. Now, normally when you're mixing and mastering this, you'd try, you'd try and normalize everything and get stuff close to the same volume. But I think that would ruin this. And obviously they've agreed because they've left it in. I've, I've said it a million times in, in a number of my other videos, sometimes the imperfections are what makes the song beautiful. And I'd hate to hear this sounding overproduced. It, they've left it with a nice raw sound and it's what's made it a really nice piece of music. He hasn't done anything flash yet. Um, I'm guessing he's, with the amount of time left, he's going to be throwing a solo in there. Being that every other video I've seen him in with the big push, he's been busting out a solo. So we'll see what he does there. I, I'm very interested to see how he approaches that solo. All right. I know he was busting into a, a higher piece of scene there, so I don't want to miss that.
very well done. Cannot complain about that whatsoever. And in regards to solo, sometimes the music just tells you where you should be heading. That, you know, I've listened to God knows how many songs in my life, but just because I was able to pick where he was going to go in regards to solo, except for maybe one bit where he went high and minimised notes, which still worked, uh, for the most part, he let the music dictate where he went with it. And that's not a bad thing. That was a very Gilmore-esque kind of performance with the solo. Didn't have to be flashy and shred a thousand notes or belt out an awesome pentatonic blues scale. Just nice and simple. Leading into the outro with a nice memorable melody. I can, I can see why Ren liked working with this guy. Because... <laughs> quite talented, knows when to pull back. Like, that entire song, like, he could have shown off a bit. But what he did show off, to me anyway, was a great use of control. It's all too easy to go out there and go, I'm going to play something really flashy and impressive. To be able to pull back and go, I'm going to play what serves the song better. Sometimes a lot harder. It took me a long time to, to learn it. That's why I can't watch a lot of covers of Pink Floyd time. Because every every time I see it, I just think the, the bass is overplaying it. But that's my personal feeling. They're certainly not bad at what they do. Like David Gilmore and now Roger Waters, because he doesn't play the bass on it too often anymore. They hire fantastic bass players who put me to shame. But for me personally, the song loses... That song loses a lot if the bassist overplays it. And being it's a ba very bass-driven song, it's so easy, it's so tempting to overplay it. I really had to do my best to rein myself back in every time I played it. Temptation is real, people. Uh, not much more to say. Very simplistic, but fantastically put together song using all the um, elements at his disposal, be it environment, instrument, his own performance, their willingness to let it stay raw and unpolished, which I think was a fantastic move. And yeah, like I said, I can certainly understand why Ren works with this guy a lot because I think that kind of creative thinking is uh, very complimentary to Ren and his musical journey. That well, about wraps up. As always, please, if you like the video, please like and share. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, there'll be plenty of updates, not updates. Um, I am hoping to get another video edited directly after this and hit you guys with a double whammy tomorrow morning to make up for the fact that for various reasons, including mental health reasons, I um, had to skip a day or two of releasing videos. But I'm hoping to drop this one at... I'm only going to be able to go by Australian Eastern Standard Time because... I'm old and I really can't be bothered working out what's going to be in other time zones. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 4 a.m. Australian Eastern Sand time. I'm hoping to drop this one, which is hopefully what you're seeing now. And then I'll be dropping another one an hour later at 5 a.m. Uh, I'm probably going to do premieres for both of them. Maybe do a live stream in between where you can put up with me doing some bass practice because i got I got band practice on Sunday, so I should probably get a bit of practice in. We've also got a gig coming up the weekend after, so I definitely have to make sure I'm not rusty at all. So if you're keen to sit in there and watch me fart ass around with my instrument a bit, I'll probably be doing that between premieres. 
Anyway, what am I forgetting? Patreon page, please. If you really want to support the channel, head over to the Patreon page, sign up. There's early access, exclusives, voting options, and on the highest tier guaranteed requests. Um, only a day or so ago, I uploaded a revisit of my very first Ren video, Hi Ren, uh, in which I could focus more on the actual music and not just trying to encompass what the hell I was seeing. Um, it was not an easy video for me to do, which any of you who, any of you who are very familiar with his stuff, especially higher end, can probably imagine. Once you got a grip on the song, it hits even harder. Um, I was debating whether to even upload it, because no one likes showing themselves in such a vulnerable state, but it's only fair to Ren and his music and to the people who've showed me the support that they have that the video went up there. It's going to stay an exclusive for the next month and will end up dropping on YouTube on the 17th of May. So if you want to see it anytime within the next month, there'll be that and some more exclusives going up. Um, head over to the Patreon. A couple of bucks, you get the early access. Like I said, voting options. You'll eventually get to vote in the poll for what I do for the 10,000 subscriber video. Could be anything to, you know, I know yelling random words out the front door of my house to covering a song to doing a breakdown analysis or something. Whatever you guys to, you know, decide. I'm a man of my word and I will do it. Anyway, that's all for me. I'm going to wrap this up. Hopefully do a quick edit because I hope I'm getting quicker at it. And I'd rather not spend two hours at it. Thankfully, the audio seems to be running a lot better. So hopefully that won't take up so much time. Anyway, I'm off to do that. You guys, as always, be excellent to each other. Peace out, and I'll catch you later.